Hello World, Frida Reba Dorsey, and Patricia O'Connor here on the Bondi balcony. We may be, we may be, come here, love. We may be 30 days away from spring there about, but my bond, my balcony says otherwise. My balcony begs to differ. It says up here, downstairs it's a little cooler. It's probably high 50s. Up here, low 60s and everything. A lot of things are budding out, not everything. A lot of things are budding out. For instance, let's just look at these these three bald cypress trees here. If I had if I had it on my agenda to transplant these three guys this year, uh, the way these buds are raising up here, the way they're all raised up, it looks like it has goosebumps. I mean, they're always there. That's just generally the way the tree looks, but they start to get more pronounced. Like I said, like it has goosebumps. That tells you that we're in the transplanting window. When you see a bald cypress, and I think a Don Redwood too, and you see something like this. This says if you were planning to replant your bald cypress or your dawn redwood, and this is where you were at in its spring. Uh, this would say, do it now. And not do it now as in, this is the most prime moment you could possibly do it. No, no, no. Do it now as in, if you're going to do it this year, do it now. The window is starting to close. And it's not something that slams shut. So you don't have to worry about your fingers. I mean, you don't have to worry about killing your tree because the, it slams shut while you were repotting or something. But in the next week or two, it will start the window for this tree to repot it will start to close. Having said that, I didn't repot these three guys when it was proper time. I was shy of that. Um, couple of months I decided they were healthy and they were taking up a whole lot of space as a, a tub and a stack of akadama and three trees and I bit the bullet and um, I didn't play by that rule but I uh, uh, in the uh, don't do as I do do as I say kind of thing um, and don't do as I say necessarily I'm not that bossy but um, it is a known thing that by the time they start pushing buds out here, your windows for repotting are starting to close. But when you see them literally, literally starting to raise up like that, you know, where you're not seeing green and stuff, that's your sweet spot. Uh, we're in a, a little state of mid flux right now. Today I've got a few things to do. It's sunny and pretty. I've already, when I woke up this morning, uh, the sidewalk had just been rained on, but it was kind of blue and patchy. It's just like it does in spring. We're seeing this stuff roll on by, roll in, roll out. Before the video's over, it'll probably be cloudy or probably be super sunny. It could be either one. And that's just the way our day's been kind of been kind of rolling. But I've been loving it. A uh, quick look at our uh, coastal oak uh yeah it's got a lot of little pink shoots all over it the oak tends to do that year round but i would definitely say it is waking up and it's starting to pick up speed the coastal oak doesn't go as fast when it comes to uh shoots and and um not shoots and ladders when it comes to little sprouts and sprigs and stuff it's not as quite as fast as the uh, cork bark oak, which almost, it's so prolific when it comes to busting out with stuff. It's almost at a tropical pace. Uh, and you can see where we did a clip back a couple of weeks ago, that was still a tree that was still flushing out new stuff all the time, while at the same time, uh, it was uh, in what it has, which is dormancy. Which, which just means it slows down a little. I mean, that's, that's basically, it's dormancy is it just kind of slows down. And the rest of the time it goes gangbusters. 
and it's um, starting to wake up now, and it's starting to see um, more shoots in more places, and I think we're about getting ready to start going. I think we're getting ready to start going gangbusters, as is my Trident Maple. So what I was saying about being in mid-flux, um, this tree is about to move. It may not be, to, it's about to move. It's position in a few days. We'll be over there in that vacant spot. I've just moved a few little potted plants out of that spot and I slid over my seedlings. I don't know if because they're a little blurry. I slid my seedlings down a little bit to make room for it. And the reason is, is because where I'm standing in a few weeks will be a tree that I'm really missing y'all. I have a ponderosa pine that is in upstate California overwintering and it's also um, hopefully getting some um, some uh, Japanese black pine grafted to it. And before I brought it up there, it was standing, it was uh, on, it was on that table. Hi, Frida. It was on that table, which was sitting right here. And it made getting to this tree and this tree a little difficult. Uh, not so much. I mean, I had to reach over to water, which I don't have a lot of, I don't enjoy doing, but I did it okay, just fine. But also, I felt weird reaching over that tree. I was, you know, I, I think of myself as a, uh, kind of clumsy at times, and I don't like having to reach. I don't like having to reach over nice things for fear that I'm going to crimp something, break something, bend something, bend needles that I don't even see, or, you know, some bull like that. So by moving this tree here, giving these guys, these two guys a little bit of a cheat this way, I'll free open that space. I'm going to um, take the sheet of plywood that was uh, on that table or maybe even cut in a fresh one and take it from here to here and I will let it protrude out to here. It'll come out here and be like that. Um, that jack is redundant. That jack is redundant. There's a jack in the vat right next to it, and there's a jack right, and by jack, I mean those are uh, scaffolding jacks. That's what makes sure that no matter how nuts I go with the trees, at some point I don't reach some tipping point where I've got too much crap up here and it falls over. Those are gonna hold, those are gonna hold, you know. So the point is that guy will get moved probably, you know, about to there and be a support. And that will house a tree that'll be up here. That'll be the home for the ponderosa pine that has got freshly grafted, um, that has got freshly grafted uh, Japanese black pine to it. The benefits to that is I have seen when the sun goes down, it goes down over there and it goes down. It's almost like uh, two walls. It comes down and it comes down and forms a hard beam in between two of these buildings. You can see these buildings. There's one going that way and then there's one going that way and then there's one coming this way and I'm the one going this way but there's space in between them. And when the sun goes down, we get a hot sundown beam that does burn stuff. I've seen it burn my maples before. I've seen it burn my pines before. Uh, pines that are known to grow on the south, on south facing cliffs. And uh, the, the side of it that faced that sundown, that orange light in the sundown, um, was not as happy as the rest of it. Now, maybe that was a part of the tree that wasn't used to that kind of sun before and all of a sudden it just got too much intense or something. I hadn't really figured that out, but I'm gonna kill that as an option by pulling by pulling the tree a little farther in and letting our um and letting our um letting our lights do our do uh, part of our heavy heavy lifting. So that's kind of the idea there. And as far as our day's concerned, I'm really loving this weather. 
I kind of hem hard around about uh, moving this all at once. Um, this is my Wednesday day off. I have Wednesday and Thursday off, and then I go back in on Friday. I sell a few nuts and bolts, say hi to a few peeps, and then I duck out of there. I know, it's great. I get weekends off. And uh, I think we're going to start doing Saturday night live videos, Saturday night live bonsai. Um, and I'm thinking that that could be our first so while I've got it up, before I put it there, it doesn't have to be over there until our Ponderosa gets in town, but I'm also thinking that I should get it there before these guys start leafing out and I have to really lean into them to get it there. You know, I have to kind of like, yeah, I don't want to lean into this stuff and right now it would be easier, but I have a few days yet. I have a few weeks yet on that and I have a few days before I need this uh, in the living room for Saturday night for Saturday night live so there's not the big rush to get it over there now although I am starting to make things make room for that that's just kind of what we've got going on a lot of our stuff over here is looking pretty good I've been wondering why I couldn't get this guy to turn around any at all and he's looking bad today I found that um I guess I need to go over it with a loop or something in a loop is a magnifying glass that a jeweler would use. And the reason I say that is uh, my eyesight's pretty good. I mean, I see my trees perfectly good. I see my needles perfectly well, but I could not find the aphids that were continuing to wreck this tree. I don't, I found them, scraped them, smushed them, sprayed them, um, danced over their little, their little bug uh, graves. Uh, I don't know if I got rid of him in time to save that little tree, that little literati. Um, that's kind of what's going on there in the um, in the solemn side. But other than that, most of our trees are very green, very active, very healthy, very, very happy. And um, I'm looking forward to more of this spring when we have when we have more good stuff going on. Uh, all of the maples are starting to produce are starting to produce stuff little tiny buds and whatnot. And uh, I'll be glad when I see, uh, when I see Simply P green up a little more, it's gonna be okay, but uh, I will be happier when it gets greener. And I have a little bit of weeding to do on these ponderosas, on a few of these ponderosas it looks like, but their color, their color, all of the uh, color on the ponderosas here looks pretty good. Some of you uh, might recall that we did some pretty heavy uh, styling work on the Ponderosa that um, is now currently in Auburn, California, where I said it was getting overwintered. We put the bonsai jacks to it and and uh, and moved some moved a few pieces of heavy wood and took a lot of the branches that were all folded up high, like it could raise its. Like it had its arms in the air, like it just didn't care was how it kind of reminded me. And we brought all of that down. It'll be interesting to see where those graphs are when we get the tree back. I'm really anxious to see it. And hopefully um, our aftercare will be good and all of our graphs will take. You know, you shouldn't probably go expecting all of your graphs to take because what I hear from some is even the veterans get about 50%. But let's go in hoping all of our graphs take and uh, all of those graphs will give us all of those options and we'll be able to uh, compress the tree. And by compress the tree, I mean, if we had all of our foliage, you know, way out here and then we've got some graphs back here, well, that gives us the option of, of knocking all that stuff in and making our tree shorter because Yamadori's, there's nobody there to, uh, restrain them and they will grow really long limbs with just little fluff on the ends and that's that's kind of what you're looking at a lot of times when you're trying to stall a yamadori tree is you're trying to fold up something and um you don't get to make beautiful aesthetic choices as much as you're just trying to fold it up in a way that doesn't look too overly contrived um so yeah that's another great thing about all of those uh, about all of those graphs is it will open up so many opportunities for us to uh, 
to style that tree in the future and to compact that tree somewhat in the future, while at the same time taking it from a tree that's going to exist in areas that have to be a certain elevation and a certain cold temperature, and it's going to broaden its horizons to anywhere a Japanese black pine can go. Because once we've eliminated, uh, in a couple of years, once we've eliminated the Japanese black pine stock is taken over on the tree and the um, ponderosa stock, meaning the leaves and I mean the needles have taken a lesser and lesser and lesser role to where we finally cut those off. Then it's, then it's on a, a Japanese black pine schedule, feeding, temperament, uh, climate, hardiness zone. Every, all of the stats on how to care for that tree switches over from Ponderosa to uh, Japanese black pine, which is the main reason I would look at doing that. Otherwise, I would try to shorten the needles on a Ponderosa because there are methods of doing it. It's just a totally different method than the ones we do for a uh, two flush pine. Uh, I'm gonna wind this up about here. I just, uh, we're already starting to um, we're already starting to experience some really really nice spring weather. I'm starting to put back out a little bit more bio gold so that when everybody uh, wakes up there'll be breakfast there on the table. Just a little uh, thanks for uh, thanks for sticking around from us to the trees and um, like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. We could do something tonight in the house. That'd be nice. And uh, other than that, we will be doing something uh, this weekend. I'm pretty sure we'll be doing a Saturday night live program. We'll try one of those, see how it goes. And um, thank you so much for watching.